So there's a lot of conflicting information floating around the internet about which swords you should be using during Crota. And so I think where the big disconnect is coming is a lot of people are telling you to use swords with perk combinations that in an optimal damage phase do the most damage. But the thing that these people are missing is not everyone is able to do an optimal DPS phase. If you're a top 1% player, you're doing speed runs, low mans, you're getting all the triumphs, you're doing this raid 100 times with the same group, sure, you guys can optimize this to hell and back. But the reality is, is that most of the community that is running raids are running with different groups, LFG groups, they're not taking the time to set up damage phases, and damage phases can be unpredictable in the first place. And so, using what is optimally the best does not always translate to being the best in actuality. And that's what I wanna talk about in this video. So we're gonna be testing a ton of different swords. We did a lot of different damage testing. I wanna thank Hoon and Wabi for spending like four hours in Crota with me doing this and crunching all these numbers and making sure that all the testing was as rigorous as possible. We tested all of the most popular legendary and exotic swords and to make a baseline, here's what we did. We capped our frames at 72 frames per second, because if you don't know, a lot of swords have increased tracking at lower frames, including Laments. Uh, all legendary swords were crafted with the Impact mod and Jagged Edge to have their impact and single hit damage as high as possible. All of the legendary swords had boss spec equipped. All of my swords were 1810, and my character level was consistently 1821. Also, I always had three Lucent Blades on, regardless of the combination, and so there is some modification that you can make if you're doing a combination of all light attacks, but we'll talk about that later. So, what we did first is we took all of these swords and we tested them each a couple of times on an optimized damage phase of Crota with no buffs, just the sword damage at base to find optimized hit combos, from that point, it's pretty easy to extrapolate based off of what you think the buffs would be, and then, you know, go further testing for there, which we do later in the video. But for now, we're doing raw DPS numbers of just the sword and Crota. It's important to know that an oversold damage phase is about 30 seconds. There is some leeway on either side, but we're gonna be calculating everything as if the optimal damage phase is 30 seconds long. So let's start with Lament, everyone's favorite probably. There are two main combinations for Lament. You have two charged light attacks, one charged heavy attack, and one regular light attack in kind of a cyclical rotation. Uh, you can fit three of those rotations plus an additional charged light attack into a 10 second window, giving you an optimal DPS of about 80.3 thousand. And for a 30 second damage phase, that comes out to just about 2.4 million base damage on Crota, once again, with no buffs and no debuffs. We'll add those later. Now, the other really popular combination for Lament is going to be three charged light attacks, one charged heavy attack, and two regular light attacks. You can fit two of those rotations plus an additional charged light attack in a 10 second window, giving you an optimal DPS of about 77.3 thousand and a total optimal damage done of around 2.32 million damage. Now, it is very important to know that there are a lot of variations that can happen in a damage phase. So do not take these numbers as gospel. Rather, they are approximations of what you might see in a given damage phase with all of the different factors that Crota has because he's got like a really whack hitbox and he moves around a lot and there's enemies and all that sort of stuff. So these are ballpark numbers. Now comparing the two Lament rotations, technically the two charged light, one charged heavy, one regular light rotation is going to be slightly more optimal, but they are close enough where if you're more comfortable using the old rotation, the three charged light, one charged heavy, two regular light, or you just like that one better, you can get away with that. And it's really not gonna change your damage that much. Now we're gonna look at the new community favorite, the Bequest. Now we tried different combinations for the Bequest, but all light attacks was by far the best. Uh, we were able to get in about 11 hits in a five second window, giving us an optimal DPS value of about 61.5 thousand damage per second and an optimal total damage of about 1.87 million damage on Crota in a 30 second damage phase with no buffs and debuffs. So quite a bit lower than Lament, but there are perks on Bequest that we're gonna add later that make it actually 
a little bit better, but we'll talk about that. Next, a lot of people have been talking about Throne Cleaver, which is also craftable. And so we wanted to test the two best rotations that people have been mentioning for Throne Cleaver, all light attacks, and then a rotation of one heavy and two light in a cyclical motion. So one heavy, two light, one heavy, two light, etc. Uh, we actually found that in a 10 second damage window, these have about the same DPS at 53.7 thousand. They give pretty much the same overall damage, but the heavy light rotation actually gave us a little bit more. And I think that's because the ammo economy just worked out just a little bit better. But on both of these swords, I ran out of ammo completely. You could add reserves to the all light attack since you're not really using Lucent Blade, but I still like, if you look at these numbers, it's just not as good as Bequest at base. Throne Cleaver doesn't really have any perks that just makes it flat out better than Bequest at base. So don't use it. It's just a worse version of Bequest, uh, unless you have Throne Cleaver and you don't have Bequest, I guess. And um, once again, we're gonna add different perks later. Uh, so we're just gonna call Throne Cleaver worse. Uh, it also has way worse tracking. You hit fewer times, so that means if you miss a like a light attack, then it's actually more detrimental to your overall damage than if you were to miss a light attack with Bequest. And Crota moves around a lot, so that is definitely going to be a thing. So I'm just going to flat out say, don't use Throne Cleaver. Now, the surprise. Gold Tusk. This is the hunter exclusive sword that is actually craftable. And we did some testing on this. Now, usually the aerial combo, which is jump, one aerial light, one aerial heavy, is technically the best because it attacks very quickly. But Crota's hitbox is awful. So you're not able to do this. He pushes you all over the place. You're missing hits. Do not do this combination on Crota. The other two rotations are all light attacks where you can hit 22 hits in 10 seconds, giving you an optimal DPS of about 56.3 thousand damage per second and an overall optimal total damage of about 1.7 million. And the other gold tusk rotation, which is three lights and then one heavy, is actually a little bit better. You can fit four of these rotation plus one additional light hit on the ground in 10 seconds. That is gonna give you an optimal damage per second of about 62.7 thousand and an overall total optimal damage of about 1.9 million. So the three light, one heavy rotation, definitely your best bet on Gold Tusk. And this is very surprising because it actually, at base, is better than Bequest. So we're gonna throw it into the finals round later. Now, a lot of people have also been talking about Fallen Guillotine, but it's not the easiest sword to farm in the entire game. And when we did testing with our own Death's Razor, which is a Vortex frame, it actually had a lot of ammo issues and couldn't even make it through an entire damage phase without losing all of the ammo, doing the standard one heavy, two light rotation on the Vortex frame. So just because it's so hard to acquire and the ammo economy was pretty lacking on it, and this video is really targeted towards more average type players, I didn't really want to go into it that much. I just don't think it's worth your time. But if any new information comes to light or I missed anything in this testing, I will update a pinned comment down below. So just make sure you check that. Maybe something has changed. And if you think I missed something, please leave a comment and I will check it out as well. So now we have our three front runners. We have Lament with two light, one heavy, one regular. That's gonna give you a total damage of about 2.4 million. The Quest with all light attacks gave you a total damage of about 1.85 million. And Gold Tusk with three lights, one heavy gave you a total damage of about 1.9 million. Now remember, the Quest and Gold Tusk get extra damage perks that Lament does not have access to. The quest gets Enhanced Surrounded, which is about a 41% damage buff, and you can craft Gold Tusk with Enhanced Whirlwind Blade, which over the course of 10 hits works its way up to about a 30% damage buff. So there's kind of a trade-off here. The Bequest damage buff from Surrounded is higher at 41%, but Surrounded is not the easiest thing in the world to keep procced during the Crota fight. If you don't have them kind of on the bridge sections on the left and right, you're almost certainly not having surrounded up most of the damage phase. And this means that you're losing a lot of damage. But let's go ahead and look at kind of the overall optimal damage phases for these weapons. So we're gonna be taking the base damage and we're gonna be adding all of the buffs and debuffs that a normal team should be expected to reasonably have. So we're not gonna be using Lumina because how many LFG teams have you ever seen use Lumina? but I think it's perfectly reasonable to expect a normal raid team to run a tractor, so a 30% buff, a well, so a 25% buff, 
Banner of War, a 10% buff, but do note that Banner of War is probably not going to last the entire phase, but for these calculations, we're just going to say it does. And then Surges, three of them giving you a 22% buff. So for Lament, using all of these different buffs and debuffs, you go from an optimal total damage of about 2.4 million all the way up to about 5.2 million total damage. The quest, you take that base 1.87 million total damage times 1.41 for the surrounded proc, and then you add on the tractor while Banner of War and Surges, and that gives you a total optimal damage of about 5.75 million. And then Gold Tusk, you take that 1.9 million base, you multiply it times 1.3 for Surrounded, you add in Tractor well Banner of War and Surges, and you get yourself a total of 5.39 million optimal. So here we have our total comparisons for an optimal damage phase and in testing, if they were close, they were about 10% less for all of these actually, just because, you know, Banner of War runs out early, Surrounded isn't always proc'd, these sorts of things. But well, what we can see is Lament and Gold Tusk are pretty similar if you're using the best damage rotations for them, respectively. And Bequest is technically slightly better for an optimal DPS phase. But if you do not proc Surrounded on Bequest, it becomes awful. If we take away that 41% buff, you decrease from a 5.71 optimal total damage all the way down to a 4.08 million optimal damage. And so my entire point is I believe it is better to use something with a slightly lower damage but an easier activation. So Gold Tusk, for instance, you get your Whirlwind Blade for free and you don't have to worry about losing it unless you don't swing for a while. And even if you do, you get it right back. 10 swings doesn't take that much time with this weapon. And so while it technically doesn't have the overall ceiling that the quest does, it also is a much less risky to use with LFG teams or when Crota is near your spawn location or when he's where he spawned in Destiny 1 and not near a lot of enemies, this sort of thing. It's going to be much easier to keep a Lament or a Gold Tusk damage consistent versus Bequest. So even though Bequest is technically a little better in an optimal situation, the entire point is you are not very often going to find yourself in perfectly optimal situations. But let's go ahead and talk about the pros and cons of all of the swords just as a recap. Lament it has a decent ammo situation, it heals you, and pretty much everyone has it. It's a quest exotic, it's not that hard to get. But the cons are that it has absolutely horrible tracking if you do not cap your frames at a lower frame rate, and it takes up your exotic slot. The quest, it has an insane total overall optimal damage, pretty decent ammo situation, and the easiest damage rotation out of any of these three swords, but the cons are you have to farm Deepstone Crypt in order to get it and craft it, and if you do not proc the fairly inconsistent surrounded perk or lose it at any time during the damage phase, you are losing a massive chunk of your damage. And then Gold Tusk, it's legendary, so it leaves your exotic slot open. The ammo economy is very good. It has an insane amount of reserves. It has a pretty easy damage rotation. Whirlwind is literally the easiest perk to proc ever, so you don't have to worry about that. And you run like a really freaking cool ninja warrior. So I think that's pretty awesome. Its tracking is also a lot better than Lament's. So overall, I'm gonna rank these Gold Tusk. Use it if you're on a hunter. I think that's gonna be your best bet. Then Lament and then Bequest with Surrounded. It's also worth noting that you could just craft a Bequest with Forple, but even if you do that, it's not really close to Lament's optimal damage. And I don't know, at that point, it just feels like Hopium. So once again, if you are on an established team that has a lot of experience and you know that you can trust people to leave ads alive and guide Crota over to sides of the bridge where you're gonna be proccing Surrounded, Go for Bequest, more power to you. But the entire point is if you are a normal average Destiny player, you're probably not going to be doing that. And it's kind of a throw to be using Bequest with Surrounded if you cannot consistently proc it. So if you guys have any comments or critiques on our damage testing, please let me know down below. I will, like I said, update a pinned comment if we forgot anything or I need to update any numbers. So please check that. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like rating and share it with your friends. Have a fantastic day.